Amen, amen. Bless God. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Welcome to Life in Christ International Church. This is our Sunday school time. We are in our fall quarter. So if you haven't already, I do encourage that you get your Sunday school resource. Our fall quarter is teaching us about God's law is love. This lesson and, and, and the theme of our fall quarter is so divinely timing. We thank God that he allows us to spend this time together to, to read in his word and to glean and to learn what the Lord is teaching us specifically this fall quarter about God's law is love. We know that the word of God tells us that God is love. And as we go throughout our day and as we go throughout our time, how do we show love? We, we can show love in service. We can show love through prayer. We can show love through kindness. We can show love through helping. As we prepare to go into our fall quarter and into our Sunday school lesson, this, this weekend and, and, it, it overwhelms me to, to be able to share that Life in Christ in the National Church was in Kenya this weekend. And what I mean by that is one of our international pastors, God bless his soul, Pastor Sampson in Kenya, went to go meet with another uh, a pastor there in uh, uh, Nairobi to learn about uh, the efforts that they're doing with their refugees to learn about how the church can come alongside helping them to reach lost souls for Christ one life at a time. And, and we know that God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. I wasn't able to physically go to Kenya, but the Lord has a man of God to meet another man of God to bring God glory all throughout the earth. And we thank the Lord for that this morning. That is God's law is love. It's, it's in action, it's made manifest, it becomes tangible. And with that, let us open our Sunday school time this morning in and with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Father, for our Sunday school resource. We thank you, Father, for our Sunday school lesson. Continue, oh great God, to help us, to allow us to grow and to develop and to become all that you designed in purpose. Father, you get all the glory, you get all the honor, and you get all the praise, and we thank you for it now, God, in Jesus' name. And so with that, we're going right into our Sunday School lesson. Here during our Sunday School time, what we like to do is go over our, our Sunday School roadmap is what I call it. It tells us about our Sunday school lesson. It tells us about what we're going to cover during this time. And so the lesson agenda for the Sunday school time is Jesus confronts hypocrisy. Um, our devotional reading to help uh, uh, set the foundation for the Sunday school time is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 19 through 23. And then um, our background scripture, where we'll be reading from this morning to learn about uh, uh, Jesus confronts hypocrisy is in uh, the book of Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 37 through 44. We have two lesson, out lesson outlines to cover this morning. The first one is two people. And we're going to read that in just a second in Luke chapter 11, verse 37 through 41. And then our second lesson outline this morning is three woes. And we're going to read that in just a second in Luke chapter 11, verse 42 through 44. Our key text this morning is Luke chapter 11, verse 39. 
And as we prepare to go into the reading of the word this morning, we are um, um, using the King James Bible. So we're going to be reading a scripture from the King James Bible this morning. And so with that, let's uh, uh, get into our, our key text, which is coming from, um, and I want to give you just a second to turn with me to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter. Our key text is verse 39. And the key text in Luke chapter 11, verse 39 reads, And the Lord said unto him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness? That's our key text. We know that the key text sets the foundation for our lesson this morning, and our lesson is Jesus confronts hypocrisy. What does that mean for us here at the church? What does that mean for us here during this Sunday school time? That means that we have to get out our spiritual mirrors. That means that we have to take a personal look, not to condemn or, or to criticize. Jesus isn't doing what he's doing, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but Jesus isn't doing what he's doing to condemn them, but he's doing what he's doing to give them an opportunity to get it right. But sometimes people's heart, the hardness of their heart, sometimes their soul sickness, they, they just refuse. They just reject God. They reject the things of God. And we pray the mercy of God. We pray that God would have compassion and help. The, the, the hardness of their heart and to help them get over uh, 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 their sin sick souls. And so for us this morning here at the church, the Lord in our, this is our first lesson of our fall quarter. Jesus confronts hypocrisy. We have to check ourselves first. And this is not something that, that, that we, 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 we advertise. There's no need to advertise. But when the Lord convicts you, Ask for his help to get it right. When the Lord convicts you, ask for his help to fix it for you, to help you fix it. And so this morning, our key text tells us, and I want to read it again in the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter, the 39th verse. And the Lord said unto them, now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Does our outside look clean? Is our inside filled with bitterness and resentment and jealousy and hatred? And the list can go on. And so we ask for the Lord's help. I'm excited about this lesson. We need this lesson. This lesson helps us point out the very nature, the very essence and character of God. It helps point out what God expects from us and what God looks like and what he doesn't look like. And so with that, we have these two lesson outlines, two people. We're going to read that in Luke chapter 11, verse 37 through 41. And then the second lesson outlined three ro three three woes, excuse me. And we're going to read that in Luke chapter 11, verse 42 through 44. And so without further delay, we're going straight into our scripture reading. What we do here during our Sunday school time, we read the word of God. And then after we read the word of God, we share a little bit. And then we read our Sunday school lesson and glean from our Sunday school lesson and, and, and share a little bit. And so... Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 37 through 41, reads in the King James Bible, And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, 
but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Verse 40, ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. So this is Jesus talking to the Pharisee. This is Jesus teaching the Pharisee. It's important to get the essence of this first lesson outline. And we're ahead of ourselves. Are we at three rows? Oh, I'm glad I caught that. Give me a minute. <laughs> All right. So this is Jesus helping us understand the very essence and nature and character of God. It, 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 and the only way that I can explain it from a personal standpoint, it takes grace to recognize God. It takes grace to recognize where you're at. And it takes grace to recognize where God has designed for us to be. You, you all hear me tell the testimony often about how the head deacon said that him drinking wine was my conviction. And, and you heard me all tell the story about the, the hair salon owner saying she can uh, smoke weed and teach Bible study. And she's going to smoke weed until the Lord uh, uh, delivers her from smoking weed and still teach Bible study. You all heard me tell those stories. And, and, and as, as I wrestled with that, as I wrestled with that, this is, this is, this is my own personal resolve. I'm okay if you tell me that you're sinning and you know it's sin. What I'm not okay with is if you're sinning and you try to convince me that it's not sin. We know that there is no gray area with God. The scripture says either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. And so as our Sunday school lesson teaches us this morning about two people, the Pharisees have grown accustomed to the cultural norm. They, they've grown accustomed to the, the, the process of things, the normal process of things. And what they're missing is the essence of God. And so Jesus, and, and that's the only way that I can express it this morning, Jesus introduced them to what I call the essence of God. He tells them, you're concerned with the process of things, the cultural norm. You're concerned with cleaning the outside, but your inside is, is grossly wicked. And if we, if we are church people, we're prone to get it wrong. I go to church every Sunday. I sing in the choir. I pray on the, uh, the prayer team. I praise in the praise team. I serve the, the, the sick and shut in. I'm an intercessor, I'm a minister, I'm a pastor, I'm a deacon, I'm an elder. That sets us up to miss the essence of God. Our service and our work and our title becomes our God. And, and the more we hold that up, and we, the more we set that as precedent over the essence of God, there, 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 there becomes what I call a, 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 a chasm. Where, where you're unable by the grace of God to recognize where you are and where God is and where God is designed for you to be or have the, the, the wherewithal or the humility to ask God's help to get to where God is designed and purpose. I love this lesson. This lesson is a help lesson. This lesson is, is, a, is a reminder lesson. This lesson is a rich lesson to bring us up Nobody wants to wallow in their sin sick soul. Nobody wants to wallow in their wickedness if they know God. 
And, and so let's get into what our Sunday school lesson teaches us this morning about our first lesson outline to people. A Sunday school lesson says prior to this verse, Jesus had been teaching the crowds regarding wickedness and judgment and how they might live in a manner indicative of spiritual health. The text is silent regarding the reason that this certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, inviting a teacher to a meal with common in the first century A.D. The meal allowed the teacher to demonstrate his or her expertise and wisdom. By extending the invitation, the host desired to receive some level of honor from the guests and from the wider community of people. Extending invitations to the socially outcast people like publicans and sinners was generally avoided. Perhaps this Pharisee wanted to question Jesus in private, or perhaps he wanted to demonstrate his own piety by way of extending an invitation to the traveling teacher. We do that, and, and, and that's, that's how society functions. That is just indicative of our carnality and our humanity. We do that to get ahead. We do that to, to be better than the next. In, in the world, it happens. And I thank God for his prudence. I thank God for his wisdom. This is what I will say. Every experience, every lesson can be a teachable experience. It can be a teachable lesson. And, and, and what, what it depends on is the condition of our heart. It's our heart hardened. What it depends on is, is, is a, 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 a the sin sickness of our soul. And so our Sunday school lesson, it continues, it said, it was common for first century Jews to perform ceremonial washings for purification. Such occurrences were a way for the people to become ritually clean as described by the law of Moses. For Pharisees, Cleanliness in general and hand washing in particular were ways to follow the religious tradition. Although the law of Moses required periodic washing, the Pharisees had broadened the path of practice. And, and if I could uh, uh, surmise what our Sunday school lesson is sharing with us this morning, we follow tradition. It's okay to follow tradition, but let's not make tradition our God. We follow cultural norms. It's okay to follow cultural norms, but let's not make cultural norms our God. We have to be able to recognize and accept and receive and follow after the essence of God. So what I'm saying is, the cultural norms may be going one way. Our traditions may be going one way. But by the grace of God, sometimes we have to pivot when the essence of God and the power of God and the spirit and character and nature of God presents itself. And here, Jesus himself is, is, is trying to teach the Pharisee. Here, Jesus himself is trying to bring the Pharisee up and cause him to recognize he's got it all wrong. His position and 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 the cultural norms and 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 the the, the the traditions is is causing him not to see God. It's causing him not to experience the essence and character and nature of God in this instance. And so that takes us into our second lesson outline. The second lesson outline for this morning is three woes. Three woes. We're reading in the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter, the 42nd through the 44th verse. Luke chapter 11, verse 42 through 44 reads for us this morning in the King James Bible. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, 
For ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Verse 44, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Wow. Wow, what a hard truth. What a hard truth. We can, and we're human. I'm, I'm not, not trying to, to knock anybody. We're human. We can give to the church all that we have. We can serve and sacrifice. And in all of that giving and all of that serving and all of that sacrifice, because we're human, it moves us to a place of entitlement. We're entitled to judge others. We're entitled because we are the first to open the church. We're the first to get to the church. We're the last person to leave the church. We serve at every function. We, we, we do that because we're human. But here God is reminding us we can do that all day long and miss God. It, it, it's clear. In verse 42, it says, and not to leave the others undone, not to leave the, 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 the love of God undone. If, if I could um, point us to an example this morning, and, and we'll get to the three woes. In the scriptures, there's an account where Martha and, and Mary have a conversation with Jesus. And Martha says, I'm here serving and I'm here doing everything. And Mary's response was, no, I want to stop all of the serving and I want to sit at the Lord Jesus' feet and sup with him. And, and, and right here, as the Lord is teaching us about the three, three woes, our service is good, but we have to make sure that we're standing on the love of God. And the only way to do that is to suck with him, to, to, to have him be the motivation and, and the reason for our service, not to get attention or to get a title or to get money or any of those things. And, and hear me this morning, these three woes is not to condemn or forsake. These three woes is to open our eyes and cause us to reach for God, to reach and stand on the love of God that this these three woes lead us to this morning. The three woes, as the Sunday School lesson teaches, a woe is a proclamation intended to announce pending pain, threat, or grief. Such proclamations are common in the Old Testament prophets. Jesus also proclaimed such warnings. On one occasion, Jesus proclaimed woes upon the scribes and Pharisees in Matthew 23. The first woe came as a result of the Pharisees keeping a minor command without showing regard for weightier command. A tithe is a gift of a tenth from the larger whole. The law of Moses provided guidelines on how the Israelites should give a tenth of their goods for worship and to support the Levites and the impoverished. Herbs like mint and root grow wild and can flourish without oversight and care from humans. Determining the appropriate amount of these herbs to tithe would have required great attention to detail from the Pharisees. Several centuries after events of this lesson, astronomical commentary on the law of Moses clarified that tithing from these herbs was not required because such plants were difficult to measure and considered insignificant. Tithing should have been a joyous act of love 
to God, our service, our sacrifice, our, our gifts, our talent, our Sunday school lesson is teaching us it should be a joyous act of love to God. This is such a rich lesson and it puts us in the right place in our walk, in our relationship with the Lord. It puts us in the right place for the things that we do for God. And, and, and it's good to be able to sup with the Lord in this place. And the reason I say that is because it helps us to see the very essence and nature and character of God. And it also helps us to see us, where we are, where we need to be. And that's a good lesson. That's a good experience. That's a good opportunity. That, that's a richness for our soul. And so we thank the Lord this morning for these two lesson outlines. This morning we were able to learn and glean about two people recognizing how the Pharisee judged Jesus because uh, 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 he, he didn't wash his hands. And, and Jesus' response was, the outside is clean, but the inside is full of wickedness. We're not excluded from that. This is a lesson for us to ask God's help for us to get it right. The second lesson outlined was three woes. We're not excluded from the three woes. In our tithing, it's just the grace of God that we can reach lost souls for Christ one life at a time. In our service, it's just the grace of God that the Lord allows us the mind and the heart to serve and to be uh, in the presence of God. We take no credit. You hear me say all the time, God gets all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We need God's help so that we're in the right place with him, so that our acts of service and our tithing and our give and every ounce of who we are for God is a joyous experience. As, as our Sunday school lesson teaches us, it's a joyous act of love to God. I don't even need to ask the question, is who you are in God, is it a joyous act of love to God? Is what you do for God, is it a joyous act of love to God? Is, is what you give unto the Lord, is it a joyous act of love to God? And it's a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation and experience with the Lord. It's an opportunity to ask the Lord's help to get it right with him. Not the people you serve. Not in the things that you do but with God. And so as we close out our Sunday school time this morning, I do want to close with our Sunday school prayer. Our Sunday school prayer says, Heavenly Father, we desire to be holy people. Take away our need to impress others and impress on us the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Show us how we might be generous with our giftings in order that we might love you and our neighbors. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. This morning, the Lord taught us during our Sunday school time about Jesus confronts hypocrisy. I don't want us to think that we are without hypocrisy. All of us have hypocrisy. But the gift of God, his mercy and his love and compassion leads us to ask God's help for us to get it right. And so we thank God for this rich lesson. The charge now is, will we apply it? And so this is how we start our fall, fall quarter. As we close out this morning, thank you for being a special part of Life in Christ in the National Church. Thank you for supping with us here during this Sunday school time. I do ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. We uh, pray for um, uh, every Thursday evening, our midweek Bible study lesson. We are in a brand new month. We're in the month of September. Here at the church, we have deemed the month of September as the month of faith. So what does that mean for us here at the church? We will be intentional about gleaning and learning what the Bible teaches us about 
faith. Our end of month wor uh, worship for uh, the month of September will be on Sunday, September 17th. And so what that means is that at 10 a.m. we'll have our Sunday school time. And directly after that, we'll go into our end of month worship. God is immensely good. God is divinely faithful. He reaches to show us the fullness of his love. He reaches to show us the fullness of his glory. He reaches to show us the fullness of who he is. And what we do, we continue to reach for God. And so with that, we close out this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord God continue to keep you supernaturally throughout this entire week. And we'll see you back here Thursday evening for our midweek Bible study. God bless.